be paid to social issues, to social factors, social forces. So much so that they stated in the report that the surest way to alleviate the effects of poverty must be to alleviate poverty itself. This was unheard of. We're calling for attention, we're calling for funding mechanisms, we're calling for national attention to be paid to social forces rather than what we would consider health forces in and of themselves. So again, a report that was revolutionary, a report that again reinstated the role of the social determinants of health and how we think about the pattern and the distribution of health across populations. Now, this slide shows data from the Black Report. So what we're looking at here is the relationship between social class, which here is indicated by occupational grade, which is the British system of social hierarchy, going from occupational grade one to grade five, five being the lowest occupational grade and one being the highest occupational grade. So we have on the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, social class, i.e. occupational grade, and we have on the y-axis, the vertical axis, probability of death or, or mortality rate. So there are a couple of things that I want to point out in this slide. Now notice that on each graph, there's a horizontal line. That line represents average mortality for the whole nation. What you'll notice when you look at these graphs is that, first of all, those at the top of the occupational grade, those at grade one, do better or have lower mortality rates than those at the bottom of the occupational grade, those at grade five. So those who are worse off do poorer than those who are better off. Now we know that. Intuitively we would think that those at the lower end of the socioeconomic status would fare worse in terms of health outcomes compared to those at the higher end of socioeconomic status. The other thing to recognize here is that it's not just those at the bottom of the occupational grade but also those near the top fare worse than those all the way at the top. So it's not just the bottom versus the top, but we see the persistence of these effects across the socioeconomic gradient. Now intuitively, we would think that those at the bottom are somewhat challenged in terms of securing those things that would bring better health, knowledge, money, power, prestige, etc. But it's not intuitive to think that those almost at the top are having a hard time in terms of material deprivation. But what these data show is that despite that, they still have higher mortality rates than those at the very highest occupational grade. So this is dealing with the social gradient in health. This is what we talk about in social epidemiology when we consider the social gradient, the fact that this gradient persists across the socioeconomic grade. Now the other thing I want to point out here is that this gradient persists across the life course. Now you may remember going back to the class objectives that one of the concepts that we were going to talk about was life course epidemiology. And life course epidemiology is basically the study of the distribution of risk factors across the life course, across phases of life. So understanding how health is distributed, understanding how social factors are distributed across the life course. And what we see first is that the gradient does persist across phases of life. The gradient is clear for stillbirths, for infant deaths, for deaths of children between the ages of 1 and 14, and then finally for adults between the ages of 15 and 64. Now in terms of looking at that horizontal line, I also want to point out to you that we see that those at the bottom of the occupational grade are above average. They have higher than average mortality rates, while those at the top of the occupational grade have lower than average mortality rates. But when you look across the life course, when you look at the different phases of life, you see that the gradient starts to shift a little bit. So that for stillbirths, the only group that's really above average in terms of mortality rates are those all the way at the bottom of the occupational grade. But then if you look at children between the ages of 1 to 14, the gradient, the shape of the gradient starts to change so that the bottom two levels of the occupational grade are above average in terms of mortality rates. And if you look at infant deaths and adults, you still see something different. So one thing I want you to take away from this slide is that the bottom do worse than the top, 
but that the social gradient persists across the entire socioeconomic status scale, if you will. The other thing I want you to take away from this slide is that the shape of the gradient changes when you think about distribution patterns over the life course. So again, getting back to that idea of life course epidemiology. And so this was, this was really big news, if you will, in this day and age because it showed the persistence of this gradient. Now to go even further, here we're looking at male and female children under the age of 14. And the previous slide, we were just looking at mortality. Here we're looking, and that was all-cause mortality. Here we're looking at all-cause mortality, but then if you break it down by cause-specific mortality, the interesting thing is that this gradient persists across health outcomes. So in the previous slide, we saw that the gradient persisted across the socioeconomic grade and across the life course, and here we see that it even persists across health outcomes. Now for diseases of the respiratory system and for congenital anomalies, the gradient is not as strong. It's still there, but it's not as strong. For the most part, we see that the gradient persists across health outcomes. And just to drive the point home a little further, this shows even more health outcomes on one slide to show you that even if there are some illnesses that where the gradient isn't as strong, for the most part, looking at this data from the Black Report, we see the persistence of this gradient across health outcomes. If you think about malignant neoplasms, um, dysfunctions of the circulatory system, the respiratory system, the musculoskeletal system, et cetera, it's a stable gradient. So the next study that I want to discuss with you is the Whitehall study. Michael Marmot um, conducted this study in male British civil servants in Whitehall, UK, in men between the ages of 14 and 64. And again, he looked at the relationship between occupational grade, the British system of social hierarchy, and mortality. But in addition to mortality, he just looked at the burden of disease. So he looked at all cause, but also cause specific morbidity. So primarily cardiovascular disease and respiratory disease. Now, then Michael Marmot has been since named Sir Michael Marmot. And the reason I point this out is to show you and illustrate for you how important this work was, at least in this region, because again, we moved from a biomedical paradigm into an appreciation of the social determinants of health. And this has had a huge impact on not only health outcomes, but also so health and social policies and programs that would affect populations of people for years to come. So he's now named Sir Michael Marmot. And again, he was examining the relationship between mortality or burden of disease and occupational grade as an indicator of socioeconomic status. Now, Marmot's study is considered by many today as one of the most important studies showing the role of the social determinants of health. And he used a stress model and hypothesized that those at the higher end of the occupational grade, those with the more stressful jobs, would have more stress, more heart disease, and more mortality, or higher mortality rates. But what he found was that it wasn't those at the higher end of the occupational grade, it wasn't those with the higher stress jobs, but rather it were, there were the people at the lower end of the occupational grade that had the highest rates of coronary heart disease and the highest mortality rates. So again, showing the power of the social gradient, showing the persistence of this gradient across health outcomes. And the other thing that I should point out before moving on is that he didn't just look at mortality. Again, he looked at the burden of disease across all of the major disease groups that you can think about. Now just to illustrate his finding, here we're looking at the relationship between occupational grade and probability of death. And again, you see that those at the bottom do worse than those at the top in terms of having a higher probability of death. But then what you see is that those near the top have a higher probability of death compared to those all the way at the top. Again, so it's not just material deprivation, but also the relative degree of disadvantage that may pose a threat to population health. Now this is another slide just showing the data in another form, again showing all-cause mortality and then also showing cause-specific mortality from coronary heart disease, the gradient persisting in both cases.
And again, another form of the same data showing the gradient 